Hello everyone, this is Bill Griffin. Welcome to the Different Take Podcast. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe, like, and share. We have episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. I really appreciate your watching. Today I want to finish the second part of two episodes uh, on the subject of Marxism. I think Marxism is a philosophy. It is not a science. To summarize the first episode, my thoughts, Marxists uh, do not take into account that the, the oppressed people that they claim should revolt and will revolt, Marx predicted many revolutions, they don't view this as, they don't seem to take into account that the oppressed people may not view themselves as oppressed and will not participate in any sort of revolution because uh, they don't view themselves that way and in fact may aspire to become capitalist. Uh, there is also not only if you're Marxist, you must be a socialist by definition and so people that, cl that claim to be socialists or people on the left don't do a good job of explaining their limits. How high will taxes be? If you, you don't like capitalism, but you don't really have an alternative. And there's also, even in Marx's uh, uh, writings, does not do a good job of, of uh, explaining how, and Marxists never do, uh, how goods and services that people want and need uh, are produced in a totally communist society. And the same can be said for a socialist uh, society. Interesting thing with Marxists is they, uh, many of them do not like being called Marxist or will not claim being Marxist um, because of the, the bad things that happened uh, in uh, China, Cuba, North Korea, Russia, or Soviet Union and uh, the millions and millions of people that died and suffered, they don't want to have any connection with that. So they're averse to being called Marxist. But this gentleman, his name is Richard Wolff. So I've got a little clip of him if you don't know who he is. He owns Marxism as a philosophy. He studied it uh, apparently his entire life. Uh, he spent his, as best I can tell, he spent his entire life in academia. He's uh, 79 years old. Uh, here he is. Theory, they do the work that produces the vast bulk of goods and services, like the slaves, like the serfs. And they always, one of Marx's great points, they always produce more of those things, the goods and services, than they themselves consume. In other words, yeah, they make chair. So I took that from a YouTube channel called The Real News Network. This was uh, the title of this. You can find it on YouTube. It's called Richard Wolf. Capitalism is holding all of us hostage. So that's just a little clip there. I don't want to subject you to much more than that because this is a very wordy and hard to listen to. And it's not... Um, it's not concise. It's not clear. What he is saying in this one little clip, it kind of epitomizes his thinking is that profits are evil. That's his really the, um, the big thing is that profits are evil. Capitalism is evil, but he has no alternative. He does not explain any alternative method uh, very well at all. The next uh, clip I want to show you is uh, two young guys who are, um, this is from also from a YouTube channel, channel called Simply Socialist. I'm sorry, it's called The Sensible, Sensible Socialist. And the title of this is James Lindsay Doesn't Understand Marxism. So if you don't know who James Lindsay is, he is a critical race theory, uh, his opponent to that theory. He's very outspoken about it. And he's recently wrote a book called Race Marxism. 
And these gentlemen in this clip are um, not happy with James Lindsay's work and uh, have some choice things to say about it. People, Marx, then Lenin, then Stalin, then Mao, cooking up in their minds ideas. No, these things are tied deeply to real material revolutions and class struggles. Socialism as an entire project and Marxism more broadly arises not from the minds of individual thinkers, but from the material conditions created by capitalism. And you'll find throughout this entire discussion, there is a complete absence of any attempt to even wrestle with the critique of political economy or to even center class analysis whatsoever. Now, of course, he has to get rid of those things because his entire argument would make no sense if he actually wrestled with what Marxism is. Um, but he's doing a lot of moving around of words and jargon. And again, like, you know, the, the idea that this is a smart, um, sound smart to dumb people is not just to like shit on people, but is literally to say that these, it, it, you have to be ignorant to take up his ideas. And he, what he's doing is throwing jargon at you, knowing that his audience won't understand what it means and will then just assume that he's operating on legitimate premises and follow his, his line of argumentation all the way through. So, so sound smart to dumb people. Um, so this is a re reaction video to an interview that James Lindsay did regarding uh, his book Race Marxism. And this is pretty typical of the Marxists. They don't understand uh, or, or they believe, I should say, that uh, the bulk of the, of the people are too, that, that do not agree with them are too dumb to, uh, to comprehend uh, what Marxism really is. Very wordy, very obtuse uh, in their conversation, D very difficult to get through. I, I, you can see in just that 40 seconds, it's probably the most coherent thing in the hour and a half or so that they did. This YouTube channel had, doesn't have a lot of views. Um, the idea that uh, James Lindsay is um, catering to dumb people, he's gotten quite a bit of exposure. He's been on uh, many uh, networks, and he's appeared on Joe Rogan, I think at least once, maybe twice. So this is kind of the mindset that the Marxist has. Uh, we'll figure out what how society will run. There will be a small group of people to figure it out. Uh, because if you really believe, if they really believe that the, 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 the vast majority of the population, which I believe make their own decisions as individuals, but in their case, they view workers as groups, but who makes the decisions? Well, in their minds, they're too dumb to make their own decisions. So there has to be smarter people to make them for them. And then there's this circular uh reasoning that uh, that they engage in in their minds i don't think they really they sort of view they have the, their philosophy is kind of akin to believing in sorcery or witchcraft or something like that they have a conclusion and they come up with whatever rationale that they can come up with to justify this uh this they can't point to a model that has actually existed in the world I listen to this for two hours, and uh, uh, they, they can't come up with one. That's typical of the Marxist uh, thinking. I want to read uh, to you from an article from the website AmericanThinker.com. This was written January 31, 2022. It's called Defeating American Marxism by Bruce Colbert. He says... Marxist teachers indoctrinate students in the religion of communism by teaching them to hate themselves, hate one another, hate their parents, hate their country, and hate their heritage. Marxists blame society's ills and people's personal difficulties on politically incorrect groups, i.e. traditional religious capitalists. Students are taught to view statements from such groups as forms of oppression and to stand up to evil. This is, uh, I think, epitomizes what these two clips of people that, that claim to be Marxists, they own it, they believe in the philosophy, and that's, it's, it is sort of 
of a religion or some sort of philosophy and, and, and where it, it's a, a fantastical thing that people believe in, sort of like, as I said, witchcraft or something. So this is an excerpt from website imhojournal.org titled The International Marxist Humanist. This is from a page, well, it's from a page out of the, I guess it's a homepage or something. The author is Raya Dunayevskaya, it was released May 1, 2000. This might be part of a part of a book, I believe. But it goes like this, but freedom for Marx meant freedom not only from capitalist economic exploitation, but also from all political restraints. To continue her historical analysis, Denayevskaya reveals how completely Marx's original conception of freedom was perverted through its adaptations by Stalin and Russia and Mao and China and the subsequent erection of totalitarian states. The exploitation of the masses persisted under these regimes in the form of a new state capitalism. Well, first of all, this is a strange thing to term the totalitarian governments of of Mao and Stalin. The interesting thing about Marx and about Marxists uh, are is the, they don't explain how this perversion is to be prevented, how power would not corrupt people, and what are the checks and balances to prevent this supposed state capitalism those totalitarian regimes were the opposite of capitalism. They didn't have free markets to produce their, uh, the goods and services that people needed and wanted. That just didn't happen. There's also no freedom of speech, freedom of the press. And uh, according to uh, this excerpt, Marx would have had, had none of that. But how can you have freedom of speech if you want to, if you believe you ought to own your own property and make your own place in the world and be an individual? Doesn't make sense, does it? This is just totally against human nature. This next clip is uh, done by BBC News. It's a short uh, clip of a five minute uh, video that you can find on YouTube. It is entitled or found on the inner Net. Marxism, what does it mean and is it an insult? What's that got to do with Marx? Socialism is, in Marx's vision, the stage that precedes communism. Socialism is like a capitalist society, a class society. It's just a class society where one particular sector of the population, the working classes, has been empowered against the capitalist classes. On the other hand, communist society is the Marxist utopia, really. It's the end of class society. It's the end of politics as conflict. So why has a political theory come to be used as an insult? It says, if you still believe that this is a viable system, you are deluded or hopelessly naive. And it also says, if you believe that this is morally justifiable, then you are completely corrupt or uh, fanatical. So this piece sort of uh, poo-poos the idea of Marxist being an evil, terrible thing. And then it's actually, um, it's an alternative philosophy that's really um, has some good points. When, as I said, you look at every country in the world and to implement a great deal of uh, Marxist philosophy, it would be, a, it's always been a disastrous for the people that live there. And um, there's no model, you can't point to one. Uh, sometimes young people in Bernie Sanders are trying to point to Scandinavian countries that have um, what they call democratic socialism, but those countries are uh, uh, free markets, respect private property. They have bloated uh, welfare systems, but the people pay for them. And everyone pays taxes that works. It is, is, not a, uh, it is not a socialist country in the way that Marxist and anti-racist would view the modern day Marxist would uh, view 
uh, socialism. They want to go way further than that. Uh, if you notice, Sweden was a model, but um, because they exercised freedom, I believe, during the, um, the COVID-19 epidemic, these folks that lauded Sweden for their Democrat socialism now don't say a word because they showed they could exercise uh, uh, individual freedom and not uh, participate in the the shutdown, social distancing, all those, and the masking, and all those types of measures. So this is from the AmericanThinker.com. It's titled, What is Marxism? by Stephen Plout. And at the beginning of this uh, uh, opinion article, he writes, Marxists claim that Marxism is a science. It is not. It is a sort of pagan religious cult. It is a theology. So I'll read from this further. Quote, Marxists often want to abolish the family, but that is because they become, became Marxist in the first place as a way to antagonize and irritate mommy and daddy. Marxists believe that people living under Marxism lose interest in religion. They do not. Marxists believe that in every voluntary transaction, one side wins and the other loses so it is impossible for two sides to profit from it. That is why they think you should be told what to buy and how much you should pay for it. Marxists claim that capitalist countries engage in imperialism, but since World War II, the largest empires of imperialist conquest were those headed by Marxist regimes. Marxists believe that there are no real conflicts of interest between the workers living in different countries and speaking different languages or coming from different cultures. That is without a doubt the very stupidest idea of all coming from Marxism. In any case, that is why Marxism is generally spread only via military conquest. Marxists think that capitalism makes people greedy. Actually, people living under communism become much greedier because they are poor and desperate. Marxists claim that Marxism is a science. It is not. It is today little more than a form of mental illness. Those are pretty harsh words, but um, Marxism uh, has, had a, has had a harsh past, and uh, it ought to be thought of, in my opinion, as, uh, as a philosophy or a theory that could never work in practice. It's strictly a fantasy and should be uh, relegated to that sort of discussion. Those are um, my thoughts on the subject. I really appreciate you watching. If you disagree with me, please comment. We have episodes coming out Tuesdays and Thursdays. Please subscribe, like, and share if you uh, saw merit in the content. And uh, thank you very much.